So I'm here in this amazing library at the Royal Institute with Kate James, who is the Chief Corporate Affairs and Global Marketing Officer. I got that right, yes, um, at Pearson. Project Literacy Lab is your baby, isn't it? Tell yeah. us a bit more about it. Well, two years ago, we were really thinking, what should we focus on? And we looked across a pretty crowded space in lots of areas, and we focused on literacy for really one key reason. We saw that it was 758 million people today don't have basic literacy skills. But what really fixated me was that over the last 10 years, despite a huge amount of great work in the space, that number wasn't moving. And that's what really made us think, as a learning company, that we had an opportunity where we could make a difference. So uh, that's Project Literacy. Tell us about the Project Literacy Lab. So the lab um, is an accelerator um, with the view of focusing on how do we tackle literacy. And it's bringing together 16 entrepreneurs who are all working on very different global challenges, but all of them with a commitment to tackle illiteracy. They really are super diverse, and some of them are very focused on, as you'd expect, direct education interventions. But what's interesting is we also have companies like Afropads, for example, that is totally focused on sanitary protection. And you know, the reality is that one in 10 girls in Africa today are dropping out of school because of the issue that they don't have access to sanitary pads because it's regarded as a luxury Which is and not a necessity. Isn't it? it's yeah, it's unbelievable. Just basically prejudiced against by virtue of your biology? Yeah, completely. And I think it's also as well, it's not just that you're dropping out of school, but also as well, I think it's just that whole issue of dignity and self confidence. So, you know, I think what the sort of two days for, for me, you know, just listening to the different entrepreneurs speaking is when we think about literacy, we have to tackle it holistically and you've got to think about the fact that there are, you know, you've got to come at it at all different directions. So there are 758 million illiterate people globally? Yeah. That's right. Uh, two thirds of those are women. Yeah. Um, do you think illiteracy affects women more than men? Yeah, and I think this is because we're not dealing with a level playing field. I mean, we've just talked about the example of sanitary power protection, but generally, you know, in terms of access to quality education, I mean, I think that is a challenge. And I, you know, and then you start to look at what does that mean in terms of impact? And it means, you know, if you look in sub-Saharan Africa, um, if you can double literacy rates amongst women, then their kids have got a 30% better chance of living beyond the age of five which sort of really brings it home to you that when we're talking about literacy, we're really talking about a global humanitarian crisis. And I think that's really interesting because no one talks about it. Why do you think that is? You know, I think it's because people aren't necessarily making the connection between literacy and some of these big challenges, whether we're talking about infant mortality, whether we're talking about gender inequality, whether we're talking about poverty, malnutrition. Um, and I think, you know, part of the opportunity we have with Project Literacy of creating this coalition of partners is raising awareness of the issue so that when people think about these development challenges, they view literacy as a pretty fundamental building block of the solution. Why startups? Because I think, well, one, I'd say it's not just startups. You know, when we thought about literacy, we knew, given the scale of the challenge, that it couldn't be a Pearson initiative, that we were looking for. Uh, to build a coalition and that it needed to be partners from governments, from NGOs, from other private sector companies and entrepreneurs absolutely part of it. But I think it's really important to recognise that we need everybody to make a difference if we're really going to put a dent in that 758 million. And why entrepreneurs? You know, because I think as we sort of, you know, you and I have listened to them all present this afternoon, they bring an unbelievable energy and passion to what they do. They're brave. They're risk takers, um, and I think they're really, you know, they're super agile. You know, they're ideating all the time, they're refining their ideas, you know, they're just smart thinkers. And one of the things for us that we really need to do is be able to increase our reach into some of the poorest communities in the world, because that's where the challenge of illiteracy is most severe. And these guys have real reach. You know, the group that we've been talking to over the last couple of days, since we met with them first and had our first literacy lab with them 12 months ago, they've increased their reach and their impact from four and a half million people to 10 million people. So who knows what they're going to be able to achieve in, you know, another 12 months. Can you see business accelerators like Project Literacy Lab working in other areas, say, 
poverty or malnutrition. Like you've yeah, just absolutely. About. I mean, I think one, we will take the learnings away from the Literacy Lab this week, from the entrepreneurs, and look to share that with the other partners in the coalition because I think they're great generic learnings. And I think it has much broader application. I mean, Unreasonable, who are our partner uh, on the lab, you know, they're holding with the State Department in July um, an accelerator that's focused on all the sustainable development goals. So they're looking at all the big global challenges, bringing entrepreneurs. Yeah, exactly. You thought this was and crazy. He's doing that in his spare time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, Daniel Epstein. What can we say? And you know, <laughs> but focused on poverty, on malnutrition, on gender inequality. So I think this is a really smart model about how you can scale up reach and impact really quickly. And you know, the great thing is the accelerator on goals came out of. Uh, last year's Project Literacy Lab because we had one of the guys from State who came along and thought that's a great idea and now they're taking it forward as you say on a much bigger stage looking at all 17 sustainable development goals. All of them. All Just, of them. Yeah, Why not? Before breakfast. Might yeah. as well if you're going to do one you might as well do exactly. both. So um, what's the future for Project Literacy Lab? So I mean our commitment to these entrepreneurs is to continue to work with them you know and that's a mix of mentoring and coaching and hopefully also connecting them with other smart individuals, with investors, all with this ability to keep on enabling them to scale and have bigger impact and all in return maintaining their commitment to literacy. And then we're going to have the next group of entrepreneurs are meeting with our literacy lab this year which will be held in the fall. Um, and is that 12? That's 12. 12. 16 in this year. class will have 12 this year. And more the year after? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, you know, keep all going. Of, I mean, you know, with all of these initiatives and, and when we looked at project literacy and we were thinking about where do we make the biggest impact, you know, we thought about how we could share best practice to help scale. We thought about the power of innovation and we thought about raising awareness and awareness then leading to mobilizing action. And so a lot of what we've been doing over the last two years is piloting, trying new initiatives. Some of it's going to work, some of it's not. You know, I think what the lab has shown for us over the last year is it's definitely working. You know, just by the one measure, for example, of their reach and impact. I mean, that's exponential to go from four and a half million to 10 million. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And you're obviously the driving force of this within Pearson. Um, is it ever a tough sell? Well. I'm a driving force with a phenomenal team behind me, which makes a big difference in uh, the impact. You know, I think, you know, we're a commercial enterprise. And so you're always looking to say, can you demonstrate the return? For us, that's a mix of, you know, we're seeing the brand lift out of this. We're also, you know, our business, we're a global learning company. And so, so much of our progress and effectiveness is determined by, you know, are we, uh, are we improving literacy rates? So it's pretty fundamental to the business in the first instance. I think also, as we've seen this week, you know, it's a really nice opportunity for our own employees to get involved. We brought people in from product development, we brought lawyers in, we brought our marketeers in to help support the entrepreneurs. And you know, I think they really enjoyed rolling up their sleeves and, and sort of working with, that, with the group. Um, so I think on lots of fronts for us, it's ticking different boxes. I think. The interesting challenge when we first thought about project literacy is, you know, we were really clear that it needed to be a coalition and we weren't going to build a coalition if it was a Pearson initiative. Hence, the branding is project literacy, the Pearson brand is nowhere near mm. it. Other than it's clear that we're obviously one of the, you know, the, we're the founding partner and the founding force in it. And that was quite a tough sell. Because, you know, from, a, from your mm. board, from the, my exec colleague's perspective, everyone was like, well, hang on. Where's our logo? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> where's, where's our brand? And the reality is, you know, what we're finding is we get amazing halo effect. Mm. You know, and so the association is there without needing to brand it as such. And as a result, you know, here we are, 2017, we've got more than 100 partners in the coalition. And I don't think that would have been the case if we set it out as a Pearson initiative. No, I agree. And I think there's a real tendency for corporate social responsibility, which I guess is what this is, but we're absolutely huge, to be, oh, we've ticked that box, done that for this year, yeah. push it off over there, and this is really living it. Yeah, and I think for us, we've been on a bit of a journey. When I came in three years ago, we had a foundation, and we were really sort of thinking about 
sort of ironic for an education company about our philanthropy is separate and quite sort of hands off the old style sort of write a check and the journey we've been on over the last three years is really saying you know we've got so much more value to add and like you know it's the journey many companies are on but you know in terms of our R&D capability in terms of our marketing our convening power our advocacy and I think you know that's what smart companies are saying of course the dollars help but I think there's so much more that companies can bring and ultimately then the return they get in terms of brand, in terms of, of employee engagement is, is much greater. So just finally, what are the most exciting things you're seeing happening in, in education and learning globally? Oh, I mean, education is incredible at the moment. I mean, like so many sectors, we're facing massive disruption. Mm -hmm. And I think digital is throwing up a phenomenal opportunity. You know, we saw one of the entrepreneurs, you know, on, on the programme this week is Robbie AI, which is looking at artificial intelligence, the next step in personalised learning. You know, so you can predict, you know, what the emotional reaction is. Is a kid engaged? Are they bored? Are they enthused about it? Which, you know, enables a whole new step in terms of tailoring learning going forward. And of course, mobile technology, you know, it means mm. that you're no longer confined to thinking about schooling in terms of bricks and mortar. And when you think about the challenges we've got with, for example, refugee populations, mm. when, you know, the kids are very nomadic, their whole schooling is super fragmented. You know, mobile gives you that consistent opportunity. So whether it's the work that we're doing with, um, with World Reader in India, where they're using mobile technology to give parents and kids access to a digital library or our partnership with Save the Children where we're devising mobile solutions for refugee kids to help supplement their learning in maths. I mean again it's just opening up a whole new sort of avenue in terms of learning. Actually I'm cheating I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, adult literacy versus child literacy mm. obviously making sure the children have a basic level of education and you know as you've discussed it's really really crucial to the future of the planet but adult literacy is it's a different issue isn't it yeah and it's really important because you know all the data shows that it's an intergenerational part so if parents are illiterate their likelihood of their children being illiterate is far greater i think it's also really important to recognize that it's not just a problem of the developing world. You know, there are 32 million Amer adults in America who don't have basic literacy skills, which is hugely debilitating. And the impact on a country's economic progress, never mind just thinking about the social impact on the individual or the family, is massive. You know, they estimate that literacy is a, you know, a $1.2 trillion uh, problem. So if we were to be sitting here in a year's time, yeah. what would you like to be saying about Project Literacy Lab? I think what I'd like to be saying about Project Literacy is that, we, you know, that the coalition hopefully is you know, close to 500 partners. Because back to, I keep coming back what, is it 100 to, now? It's 100 now, yeah. But you know, I think the more we can do to raise awareness of the issue, the more people also make the connection to the fact that literacy really is a fundamental component of the solution of so many of these big development challenges we're talking about, whether it's malnutrition, whether it's poverty, that we've got to, you know, really get up and tackle this and we can all make a difference. So I think 500 partners, I don't think that's an unreasonable. And as far as the lab goes, you know, you heard Daniel say it this afternoon, we've gone from four and a half to 10 million. We're going to have another group of entrepreneurs. You know, he thinks we can get to 100. A year feels ambitious, but that's what we've got to, you know, we've got to aim for it. That's brilliant. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you.